Hi, my name is Cash and welcome to Cashed Out Cars. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to build custom heat shields for your vehicle. Let's get right into it. To begin, you'll need to pick where you want to shield. In my case, my Turbo Miata's downpipe is quite close to some critical brake components that I want to protect. To pick a good material for a heat shield, you'll want something that reflects heat, the radiation component of heat, something that blocks flow, the convection component of heat, and something that doesn't directly touch or conduct heat to what you're trying to protect. My choice of material for this shield was aluminum since it's inexpensive, easy to work with, and it does a decent job doing what I just talked about. To start with your heat shield design, I like to start out with some CAD while doing projects like this. Cardboard aided design is a quick and easy way to go ahead and draft up the shape that you're trying to make before you actually make it out of aluminum. To use cardboard to my advantage, I like to start with a basic idea of what I wanna make, draw it out on cardboard and cut it out. Then I go ahead and trim it and bend it repeatedly until it fits what I'm looking for. Once you're happy with the fit of your cardboard, you could go ahead and transfer your design over to aluminum or your choice of heat shield material. To do this, I just go ahead and trace around my design with a permanent marker. Once your design is all transferred over, it's time for the fun, but sometimes tricky and slightly challenging part, shaping the aluminum. There's many ways to do this. A simple one is using tin snips, which are basically high strength scissors. These work well, but take some patience. Also, they're not great for tight bends. Another option is to use a tool specifically designed for metal cutting, such as this metal shear. A more commonly found option is a jigsaw with a metal blade. Regardless of your tool choice, go ahead and cut your design out of aluminum. For tight areas, I'd recommend drilling out the corners. Aluminum is very easy to center punch to get accurate holes. This method reduces the stress at the corners of the material and it also makes cutting easier since you don't need to do any super sharp curves. For some hard to reach places, you might be able to drill the corners and then bend the material repeatedly until it breaks to make things easier. To get the nice bends that you want in your material, there's also a few options. One is using basic tools such as clamps, wooden blocks, and hammers to go ahead and shape the material. This works and is perfectly effective, but it does take some time and patience, and it likely won't come out absolutely perfectly. If you have access to a sheet metal bender, that is absolutely the way to go. These allow you to make nice, straight, and clean bends exactly where you want. But once again, they're not absolutely a necessity and anyone could make a heat shield without all of these special tools. Once you're happy with your shape, you could go ahead and install it. For mine, I used a factory airbox location and the factory bolt that went there. In the future, I might add a second mount to make it a little bit more solid with less vibration. The very last thing that I did was file down the edges and trim them up with tape. This prevents cuts and cleans up the heat shield just a bit. Note that the heat shield has an air gap between the downpipe and the shield and that there's also a gap between the brakes and the shield. This is what you want for maximum protection. In some cases, you could use shielding to completely isolate components in your engine bay. You also could add reflective tapes and insulations to make the shields even more effective and I have some good products for this linked down in the description below. The limits of heat shielding are really up to your creativity and how much time and money you want to spend on them. For my purposes, this simple shield will do great. And so guys, with all that said, that is gonna wrap up this video. I wanna hear from you guys down below what vehicle you're making heat shielding for and where you're putting it in your engine bay. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it, subscribe for more, and I hope you stick around for the next one. Take care.